So good to see so many people out this morning. What a, what a great day it is to celebrate um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the first day of the week. And also to celebrate, as you see to my left here, to your right, there's this tank here, and we are going to celebrate baptism today, which is an important part of, of who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. We are not a religious church in the sense that we follow tradition or, you know, you know, religious uh, rituals, but we are followers of Jesus Christ here at New Life. And so we believe in that you make a personal decision to, fo- to believe in Jesus Christ, the one who died for your sins and rose again. And in doing so, uh, the Bible invites us to make that decision a public statement when you follow the Lord in baptism in the water. It says in the book of Romans, I have it here, <laughs> chapter 6, <Bible>. verse 4. <laughs> Therefore, we've been buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too may live or may walk in newness of life. And so what we celebrate today is three young people who've said, you know what, I believe this and I want to make a public statement that this is who I am and this is how I'm going to walk now, following Jesus Christ. Christ. This is a public declaration of faith, and this is what has happened since the very first century. 
uh, when, after Jesus rose from the dead, after the church began, every time someone would believe in Jesus Christ, they would follow that up by making a public statement by identifying with him uh, in baptism. And what happens is when you put you under the water in baptism, that's symbolic of, of death. And when we pull, pull you out of the water, that's symbolic of life. And so it's a visual picture of the inward reality. My old life is dead. I'm now walking in the newness of life of Jesus Christ. And that's what our church is about, moving up and out in new life in Jesus Christ together. And so I'm going to invite the three baptismal candidates uh, just to, to come, and they're going to just kind of wait here. We're going to start with um, Emma. She's going to share her testimony first, and then followed by Haley, followed by Emily. Yeah, come on up, Emma. Yeah. And give them a hand. This, these are our, our baptismal candidates, and just so glad that they're going to share their story uh, with us. And so we'll start with, uh, with Emma, and then followed by Haley, followed by Emily. Yeah, so come on up, Emma. So. I'm Emma Nancy Stelmashuk. I have two siblings, Kayla and Ty, and two parents, Melanie and Jason. I was born and raised on an acreage just outside Blackfoot. I've always felt and known Jesus is alive, and he died on the cross for our sins. But when I was 11, I knew and admitted I'm a sinner, and Christ saved me. The last few years have been tough and many struggles. I would then say to myself, why is he doing this to me? Why do I have such bad anxiety? So much pain, I would ever think about ending my life. The list can go on, but I have to think the opposite. Christ saved me and blessed me with a loving family and also blessed and surrounded me with so many people who care and love about me and I have Jesus. In Gospel Psalms 4 verse 8, says, in peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord. Make me dwell in safety. It has helped me out so much with sleeping and the nightmares I always used to have. I've thought about baptism for a long time, but after camp, my eyes and heart were open even more. And today is the day I'm getting baptized as an act of obedience to Christ and as a way to publicly proclaim my salvation. Just like in Philippians 1 verse 6, 1 verse 6 says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And also Ephesians 2, verse 12 to 13 says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. All right, Haley, come on up. Okay, hi, I'm Haley. Um, so um, I'm not a good public speaker, so just a little warning. Um, so I did not grow up in a Christian household, but I did know God. From grades, uh, from kindergarten to grade five, I went to a Catholic school, so I was taught about Jesus and went to math every month, but I didn't really look into it much. Um, it was where I first learned about God at that school, but at that school, it also made me believe God didn't exist. I was bullied pretty badly there, and I had no hope, and I was lost and alone. The bullying got so bad that I didn't want to be alive anymore, and my mom saw that, so we decided I would move schools. Um, I didn't even think about God at that point, but... I decided for some reason I wanted to go to a camp, a summer camp, for a week, like lots of kids like to do. <laughs> and we found Manitou Lake Bible Camp, and that's the one we decided to go to. Um, I didn't really want to go to a Bible camp, but you know, I was excited still. Um, little did I know that that Bible camp would be so meaningful to me. Um, I made lots of friends there, and I realized that God is actually with me. Um, with one experience where I had a massive anxiety the previous night, or anxiety attack the previous night, and the um, preacher that day asked for volunteers to read a passage. And so I raised my hand, <laughs> and he asked me to read 1 Peter 5, 7, which reads, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. <laughs> yeah, and so that really opened my eyes, and so on July 4th, 2017, I fully believed in God, um, and I lived my life believing in God, but I still lived in sin, and it wasn't really great, and uh, over time, 
I kind of had those camp highs and lows, you know? And so um, around grade eight and nine, um, there was a really low point in my life where the doctors told me I had severe anxiety and depression. And it was really not good. So I kind of lost sight of God there, but I realized I need to turn my eyes to him more and just trust him in the process. And I decided that this time, this next summer, I wanted to work as a camp leader. And so I did, and I made friends there who are now like my family and it's great. And, um, but, sorry, um, those friends uh, ended up taking me to youth group at this church and I couldn't drive yet so they were picking me up every Sunday to bring me here. And it was really, it was really great and I really found family and love here. Um, as well as when I got my license, I started coming here and I realized how grateful I was to be brought here by those friends to youth group. Um, and I just realized that God will show you himself through other people and through waiting. Um, and I wanted to get baptized here at church today, um, at this church specifically, <laughs> because the family and love I felt here is beyond anything I've ever felt. And seeing the people here and the faith everybody has made me see how much more I wanted to grow in my relationship with Jesus. Um, as well as I know that the people here will help me to grow in my relationship with Jesus. I was previously baptized when I was a baby um, at a Catholic church and my parents wrote me a note and I wanted to read that note. So it starts, our precious Haley, Peaches, mom and dad love you so much. We chose to have you baptized so you could begin your spir spiritual life with God or whomever you choose. My wish for you is to have someone to believe in, to have to pray to and talk to, to have your warmth and security. I want, I want you to be strong in your beliefs and faith. We want you to be able to decide where your faith will take you. We will always love you and respect you. You can always count on us. We will always try to do our, what's best for you, and we will always be proud of you. You are you and who you are. We love you so much. Love, Mom and Dad. So today, I want to make my decision on my own to be baptized here today with my parents seeing me here. And thank you. All right, Emily, come on up. And sure. All right, I'm gonna keep this short. So growing up, I went to church every Sunday and when I was older, I helped every Sunday in the nursery. I knew Jesus died for me and saved me from my sins, but I was living off of my parents' faith. I had always thought to myself I wanted to know God better, but I never actually did anything about it. It wasn't until about last year where I actually decided to get into the habit of reading my Bible and praying every day. I soon rededicated my life to Christ and started to grow in my faith. God has led me to baptism as the next step in my walk with him. And I'm going to end it with a verse, which is Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine so others may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Emma, do you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes. And is it your desire today to, to, to say to all these present that you are a follower of Jesus Christ and, it's your, and you want to live your life for him from this day forth? Yes. Okay. I baptize you, Emma, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Haley, do you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord? Yeah. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I do. And is it your desire today to, to declare to everyone here that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? You want to live your life for him from this day forward? Yes. All right, Haley. I baptize you, Haley, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Emily, do you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes. And is it your desire to declare to everyone present here that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? You want to live your life for him from this day forward? Yes. I baptize you, Emily, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stand in that place, free at last, meeting face to face. I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. And endless joy and perfect peace, earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate that Jesus is alive. And it's kind of an older song, if you guys remember from camp. But I know that although we're celebrating this, sometimes you're going through grief and a lot of other things in life. And this joy that we have, it isn't, it, we're saying, oh, happy day, but it isn't just some floofy, like, oh, it comes and goes. It actually is a deep joy, even in the midst through grief, if that's what you're dealing with right now. So that's why we're going to say together that we will not be shaken. It's because of the Lord that we will not be shaken. So sing with us. Be 
Inside your little song sheet there in the middle is a verse. You'll see it. It's in dark blue. Um, it's kind of the theme verse of today. It's right there in the middle if you want to just see it there. Because I got the question is, like, why would you bother doing something like this? Or even why even get up and come to church on a Sunday morning? That's a good question to ask. Because if it's just a, a matter of doing religious rituals, then there are probably other options that would be even better to do on a, on a summer Sunday morning in Lloydminster, right? If, if there was nothing just beyond religious ritual, but there is something more to what we believe in here than that. That we believe that one person can actually make a world of a difference. And of course, that person is Jesus Christ. And, and no matter what you think about church, because, yeah, there are some messed up churches, and there's messed up religion, and there's messed up traditions out there. But when you just boil that all away and get back to this one person, Jesus Christ, we find ourselves having to deal with some serious ish, truth matters here. Because if Jesus is who he said he is, and he did what he said he did, and what the Bible says he did, then you got to stop and say, is this worth considering? Because Jesus has done things that no one else could do. Like, for instance, Jesus predicted his own death and his resurrection. No one else has ever been able to do that, right? I mean, people have been able to say, yeah, I'm going to die, you know, like kind of like Star Wars, Yoda, you know, he's, he's getting ready to die, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to pass away or whatever, you know, and, and like we know that people can predict that, yeah, at some point I'm going to die, but no one has ever been able to say, I'm going to die, and guess what, three days later, I'm going to rise again. That's what makes Christianity different than every other religious system and structure and faith-based thing that you could follow. I mean, there's nothing that compares to Jesus Christ. Buddha didn't, didn't predict his death and resurrection. Muhammad didn't predict his death and resurrection. Confucius didn't predict his death and resurrection. We are not one of a group that are all the same. We believe in this very unique thing called the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And we just celebrated it. Thank you, girls, for giving us the visual picture of what makes Christianity unique and what makes it true. And so from the first century till today, groups of people like us have gathered and celebrated and worshiped God through Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. That's what makes Christianity unique. We don't all follow the same path to the same destination, just through different paths. It doesn't work. Jesus himself said, there is one way. I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, here in this little verse here we have, it's in 1 Corinthians. It was a church in the first century that was messed up. They believed in Jesus, but they hadn't quite figured it all out yet. They had immorality going on. They had lawsuits going on. They were fighting all the time. And so he writes this book to him, the Apostle Paul, and says, look, you guys, if you're, you know, you belong to Jesus, we need to clean this stuff up. But, but at the end of the book, he spends a whole chapter talking about their resurrection because he's like, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then this is a waste of time. We might as well go golfing, go fishing, go quilting, go crafting, whatever you do, right? Go gardening, It doesn't matter, because if if Jesus isn't alive, we're wasting our time. But he ends the, the, basically the book with these two verses in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, 58. He says, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, after establishing the fact that the resurrection did happen, it is significant, it changes us, and we look forward to ourselves being resurrected, He says, so then, dear brothers and sisters, be firm. Don't be moved. And here's where it comes in for us today. There's so much stuff going on out there. We feel like the world is is almost like a roller coaster out of control. But because of the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have this secure standing. Uh, You could translate that, be steadfast, immovable. The verb actually is the verb be. It's 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 a statement of identity and position. Be steadfast, be immovable. Don't be like that, you know, little piece of driftwood that just floats along with the current be solid. Why, you, why can you be solid? Because Jesus Christ, in fact, did rise from the dead. He is living. You are serving a risen Savior, and you too will rise from the dead someday. You have a future resurrection because of your faith in Jesus Christ. And all sorts of weird stuff will continue to happen in our lifetimes. Uh, we'll see all sorts of, you know, strange ideas come around. But we have this firm anchor in Jesus Christ that's, that gives us stability and security in our position and in our identity. Because Jesus Christ died and rose again. No one else has ever done that. No one else will ever do that. But those who believe in Jesus Christ can be assured that they one day will conquer death with him. Because he conquered death once and for all. We have this secure standing and this new identity in Jesus Christ. Don't be moved. Uh, Be firm. And then he says, always be outstanding in the work of the Lord. So, So here's your position and here's your practice, he says. In light of the fact that Jesus rose from the dead, the thing that you should invest your life in is serving his purposes. He uses these two words to describe like something that's overflowing, that's, that's filling over the banks. In my, in my last church, we had this uh, baptism on the corner of the stage, and there was a valve at the way back in the furnace room, and the guy would open up the valve and let the hot water in. And the one guy done it this one morning, he turned on the valve, and he was putting some hot water so the tank was a little warmer. And, and then the service started, and as the service was going on, suddenly the water began to flow over the tank onto the stage. You know, and, and the, like that's what this is the idea. This overflowing, this, this, this abundance just this keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. He says, always abounding. I had these Ukrainian aunts, Auntie Josie and Auntie Annie. And Auntie Josie and Auntie Annie were typical Ukrainian women. Um, You never, ever went hungry in their house. Never did I ever, you know, just wander around their house singing, oh, man, my stomach is just eating my, you know, eating itself because I'm so hungry. Never. There was always just food and 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 food. I mean, it just kept coming. This is the picture that, is painted in this verse. Always be outstanding in the work of the Lord. This is not the bureaucrat or the unionized employee who does the minimal, who puts in just the 37.5 hours a week and then is done, who asks for extra benefits and time off. No, this is the person who goes above and beyond. 
because they realize this, the position and identity they have in Jesus Christ. It, first and foremost, it's that idea of, of you are now a representative and a delegate for Jesus Christ where you are. These girls here are going to be representing Jesus Christ in the Kitscotty High School, in the Lloyd Mr. Comprehensive High School, in the Lashburn High School. And they have declared it here, but we're going to pray for them as they now take their faith and, and live it out in the schools in which God has placed them and the communities in which they live. You represent Christ when you work at your oil field service company, the bank, the construction company you work at, the schools you attend, the sports teams you play on. You are an ambassador for Christ. If you are vocal about your faith, I hope that your work is a representation of Jesus Christ. If you do poor work, don't tell people you're a Christian, okay? That's not a good idea. But if you, if you, if you do good work, that, that your employer should say, I'm so glad I got those Christians. Now, they're kind of weird, but, but man, they do good work. <laughs> Does your work represent Jesus Christ? That's what he's singing. Always outstanding in the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You're not wasting your life. I don't know if you've ever gone to the ocean and built a sandcastle. I love building sandcastles. It's fun, right? Especially low tide, right? Because, you know, the water goes out and the sand is wet and it's just, just really nice to pack together and you can build little castles and moats and then it's wonderful and you build these huge creations and then guess what happens? The tide begins to come in and it comes in. And pretty soon it begins to lap against the wall of your wonderful creation. And before you know it, it's just nothing. Or you have a little brother or sister that comes along and <laughs> kicks it over. I mean, we've all had that experience. And, and I think a lot of people are building sandcastles at low tide and thinking, this is my life. And then they watch it all wash away and they wonder, why did I bother? But the Bible says, you know what? When you are outstanding in your work of the Lord because of the resurrection, because of Jesus, the work that you do, is never wasted. It's not in vain. I was reading this palliative care nurse who was talking about how she had attended to 500 people that had died as part of her job. And the one consistent thing, especially with the men, as they died, the one thing they said was, I worked too much. Your employer is not going to come to your bedside when you're dying. Rarely. I'm telling you. They may send flowers to your funeral. Maybe not. But the Lord knows everything you do for him. And he keeps track. And what you do because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ does make a difference. These three girls all served at camp this summer. So they have already lived out this reality. They've give, made it public today, but they, they already gave their time. And, and throughout history of the church and even the history of people in this gathering, some of you know what it's like to be poured out for the Lord. It's never in vain. But it is exhausting. That word labor is po uh, working to the point of fatigue. It's when you're just bone tired, but you just say, I know it's worth it because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We at New Life are inviting you to move up and out of New Life in Jesus Christ. But some of you potentially are building sandcastles that are going to wash away. Now, you should have jobs. You should make money. <laughs> you should do well in those jobs. But understand, your day job is, will probably make zero to little difference for eternity, unless you're representing Jesus Christ and helping people find him. But the projects you're working on are all going to burn up and be destroyed. And with the current government, you, you know, who knows what will happen with it, right? But, but this stuff will last. So work all week hard, but then come and serve with us here. Be outstanding in the work of the Lord. Uh, last year, we, we had a group of people that, that volunteered every week for like 13 weeks for Alpha. I, in my history of New Life, that had never happened before in my five years, where someone actually served for 13 weeks straight. But they were outstanding in the work of the Lord. And it wasn't in vain. And so I'm inviting you to, to take some steps this year. To, to make a difference, 
to invest your life where you are, but also here in the church, to, to find a place where you, where you can give and where you can serve and where you can help out. And the scripture says it's not in vain. It's worth the investment. But that might be mean saying no to something else in order to say yes to this place. We are not tapping anyone out right now at New Life. No one serves five days a week in our church. So I'm inviting you to take a step, to find a place, to serve, to get involved with other people. Because this is the truth. Jesus Christ changed this world forever. He's changed lives forever. And I hope that, that you have experienced that in your own life. But now he says, it's not just a matter of, of believing in, in Jesus and, and accepting him, but now it's, it's walking with him and discovering that your life can make a difference just like Jesus Christ made a difference. So would you join this team here and make a difference as we move up and out in new life in Jesus Christ together? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm inviting you. He is inviting you into his family today. You can believe in him. He died for your sins. He rose again so you can walk in newness of life. That's what we exist here for, is just to share that message. And then to help people just discover new life in Jesus. The world will not offer you anything like Jesus can offer you. It just doesn't. So we're offering you the one thing that, that can change your life in, in a permanent way. Salvation in Jesus Christ alone team, would you come up? We're going to just prepare to, to, to sing our, our final song, and then we're going to have some, some snacks and some food and some fun. And that's what the church is all about. We worship God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We eat together. We walk together. We mourn together. We celebrate together. This is what it's like. You're not alone here. You're part of a family. And if you have never entered that family through faith in Christ, we invite you to do that today. You can just do that where you're seated. You can make, make that prayer in your heart, saying, you know, Lord, I believe this. You died for me. You rose again, I, and, and I want to walk in this new life today, too. If you'd like to, to talk about baptism, I'd be happy to talk to you about that after the service, and we can plan. We'll bring the tank in any time if there's people ready to, to get baptized, but we just like to have a little chat with you before and just kind of, you know, hear your story, and then we'd love to share it with the church family. So uh, if you want to do that in a future week, let me know, and we, we can talk about that, but... Let's just, let's just close in prayer and just invite you, and then we're going to sing off a final song here. Let's pray together. If you don't know Jesus today, you, you, can, you can pray this prayer. Lord, I, I believe in you. Jesus, you are the Son of God. You died for my sins. You rose again. I place my faith in you today, knowing that you've forgiven me my sin, and you want me to give me new life. I believe it. And church family, I just encourage you as, as we close Father, help us to be outstanding in the work of the Lord. To, to stand secure in our position in you. Immovable, steadfast. Because we believe in the one person who made an eternal difference in our world. Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. He is king and leader of this church. King and leader of our lives. And we worship him and give him the glory. This morning we pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. And let's stand and sing along with the team here. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I Sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me. Yeah.
same God who's never late is working all things out. Working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Then nothing can stand against, and I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Then nothing can stand against And I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names Then nothing can stand against Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Yes, I will sing for joy my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. Have a seat for a second. I want to thank everyone that brought food and... Um, help set up all the team that was here early setting up the stage and just i mean this is a a joint effort and people that brought chairs i mean just thank you everyone that in the parking lot and uh just just a wonderful team effort and, we're, and I, don't run away please stick around have some food uh, jump on the bouncy house if you're younger and uh you know just enjoy some coffee this is this is our time just to just to be picnicking together here so please stick around we got food there and uh and uh, if we have to, we'll get some more. I mean, whatever. We don't care. We're just glad you're here. Don't run off. We want to just enjoy some time together. But before we do that, just we want to pray for our baptism, you know, uh, the girls here today. And so I'm going to invite the girls to come and stand here. And I'm going to, Pastor Light is going to come pray for them. He's, he's invested time in, in these girls. And we'll continue to him and, Eli, and, and Abigail. So we're so thankful. And so we want to pray for them. Whenever we have a baptism, especially those of you that, that you know, like we want to, you know, maybe write their names in your Bible. Just Pray for these, these people that, that follow Christ. They need God's protection, God's, God's care. And so we want to just pray for them as, as they, you know, continue on here. And then you come and, you know, just congratulate them and, and just encourage them with, with, you know, as they take this step of waiting. So Pastor Elijah, would you close us in prayer and, and pray a blessing on these girls? Absolutely. Would you extend your right hand a blessing over these girls? All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity today to celebrate you and what you have done 2,000 years ago. And what a meaningful time together we have to see the baptisms, the, the death and burial of the old self into new life now represented in these girls. Lord, I pray for Haley, for Emma and for Emily. Lord, that you would guide them and that you would lead them. Lord, that it would not be a spirit of fear, of doubt, of darkness, but a spirit of light, the Holy Spirit to live inside of them. Lord, I pray that, uh, that you, would, you would give them your favor and your blessing and that you would guide them, Lord, in this, in this world to live out the new life that you have given them. Lord, we thank you for that today. Lord, may you empower them to live out this faith wherever they go, in their schools, workplaces, and I know that you have great plan for them. And so, Lord, guide them. And uh, we, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together and celebrate you today. And so we thank you, Lord. Uh, we, we, we thank you for this, for your presence here this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everybody said, amen. All right, God bless. All right, so just, uh, yeah, go and there's some food there. And just kind of take your kids through. And go as a family and then have a seat there or bring your chairs over there. Uh, we're going to let the seniors go through first, okay, and then we'll follow by families and whatever. And so let's, uh, 
let, let's enjoy some some food and and there's bouncy houses set up one for the little guys one for the big guys bathrooms are around here corner have a great time and god bless you